So I finally finished the next version of this headset, which involves inside out tracking like it did previously, but this time I also have hand tracking. And in this video, I'll show both the inside out tracking capabilities and the hand tracking capabilities, because in prior videos, it was a little short. And this will be done in the Steam VR lobby and also VR chat. And so the most notable change in this headset is the camera, which is now a stereo camera instead of three mono cameras that were hardware synced. The camera you see on the headset is 160 degrees FOV, and I think the resolution is good enough for a pass through, which is something that I hope to get through in the future. This also explains why I have the camera in the center of the headset instead of slightly angling it down or moving it lower on the headset instead of leaving it in the center. And while I could increase the FOV by selecting another camera like this with a higher FOV range, I think that this one is fine for where it is at now. In addition to being 160 degrees FOV, it's also a rolling shutter camera that can run at 60 FPS, which is adequate for the slam running on the headset. I have also tested multiple IMUs and am using an MBU 6500. One more notable change I made on this headset aside from the camera is the position of the wires exiting the headset. In the previous iteration, I had the wires coming out of the left side of the headset and this was a problem because I always felt a slight pull on the left side of the headset just because that's where the wires came out of. So now all the cords plug into the top of the headset and go over the top of the head which I find a lot more comfortable and I'm able to move my head a lot more easily. Also since I changed out the PS3i cameras. The weight dropped significantly because the PS3i cameras are heavy with their wires and also with the camera module and it also decreased the length of the headset. In the 3D model I had distance from my forehead to the front of the headset set to 100 millimeters but I believe it could go at least 20 millimeters lower. As it stands I believe if I swap out my laptop with a mini PC running Windows 10 and attached a battery to it and plugged in all the wires and we did the CAD to have a head mount then everything would work as expected. Though I haven't touched upon any tuning or going further in depth yet because I want to know my parameters of the device I'm going to be connecting to before making any adjustments and really trying to optimize it. And seeing how fluidly my computer was able to run SteamVR and the Slam at the same time, it does make me want to consider using a single board computer. I've been slowly trying to rebuild the software to be compatible with an SBC, but I'm not exactly sure how everything will turn out and what will be compatible and won't be compatible until I actually get my hands on one. Regardless of which one I choose, I hope keep the size of the headset to as close as it is right now. In this video, I'm also showing the full setup. So all the wires plug into the top of the headset and you can remove all of them. So none of the wires are stuck inside of the headset. I have black electrical tape securing the wires to the top strap of the headset, which travels along the back of my neck and splits off into two portions. One of them is the HDMI cord, which plugs into the top of the laptop, which is right next to my laptop charging port that I have easy access to. There are two 3D printed buckles. The top one holds my laptop in place against my back, and the bottom one secures the bag shut because I have to leave part of it opened and unzipped due to the positioning of the cords. In the mesh pouch at the front, there's extra strap from the buckle that I decided not to cut off because I need to use it for something else later. So while the laptop goes in the first pouch closest to my back, in the second pouch that's zipped up, the three USB cables go inside of there. This is where they connect to a USB hub and the pouch is really convenient for storing the extra length of the wire. And so this USB hub is connected to my laptop by a hole in the second pouch and first pouch where the USB hub exits the second pouch and enters the first pouch to connect to my laptop. The bag itself was pretty cheap and I believe it was only five or six dollars and I also like that the laptop is exposed as this helps with cooling. To show the inside out tracking I'll first show the Steam VR home and me moving around it then I'll show VR chat and also me moving around it and then after that I'll try my best to move around very quickly to kind of show how well it handles. And so this is how I set things up where on the right side is the headset that is deconstructed and on the left side is my laptop. I'll be holding the tray with my left hand and recording with my right. When I go wireless it should be a lot easier to record because I don't have to worry about holding my laptop and my headset and recording at the same time. I could just set up my phone and laptop on the ground so that my phone is recording both me and my laptop to show you how it performs in real time. So in this first clip I will be walking around the Steam VR house and doing a full loop around my house before returning back to my same position, which is on the couch. And in this clip, it does run a little slower than I would like, mostly because I have maybe 100 Google Chrome tabs open. But before I redid it in VR chat, which you'll see in the next clip, I decided to close those tabs.
And so here, as I sit down, you can see that I pretty much ended up at the same place that I started at. And so this neck clip will be done in VR chat and I've never played VR chat before this, so I could miss seeing some things. The only thing I know about is the mirror, which I first started at. The character is something random that I found online and I still have my controllers connected. So the body does look a little weird. So throughout this clip, I am trying a variety of things such as trying to move side to side quickly or as quickly as I can because I'm holding a heavy tray that I don't one falling off and I'm also trying to go up pretty close to some things and try and get into low feature or low light areas. And here I am trying to go up and down as quickly as possible. And then I start moving it side to side as fast as I can. And as you see here, my character is experiencing a fair amount of rolling. And so then after moving around as quickly as I could while holding everything, I decided to very quickly make a video where I'm just holding the headset. But unfortunately, I'm limited by the black cable, which is used for my camera. And this clip is mostly to show how reactive it is and kind of what the latency is like. I haven't done any stringent measurements yet, but I am extremely happy with how it ended up. And in the clip, as I'm moving it in yaw, you can really see how reactive it is. Position is just as reactive as you're seeing with rotation, but it's just harder to show because of how limited in movement I am due to the cable length. And now I'll show the hand tracking. First, I'll show it in the Steam VR Void, which makes for good contrast against the white fingers of the hand. In this setup, I'll be holding my phone with my left hand to record, and I'll be using my right hand to move around. There is also the deconstructed headset on the left side of the video, and my laptop in the center. Some clips will show a screen recording of my laptop. Some will show the camera view on my right lens, since if I showed both, it would be heavier on my computer and really sucks up resources. But both are being used because I use them for epic polar geometry to determine the depth and to also obtain a larger field of view. So as you see on the screen right now, this is the hand tracking and this is kind of what I came up with. I just have the fingers modeled because I'm not too big of a fan of the palm getting in the way of anything I'm doing and overall believe that just having fingers is more aesthetically pleasing. And I especially like how the fingers fade away as they reach the knuckle. But later down the line, I think I'll probably move to a hand model just because it's easier for my mind to process. And so as I'm showing my hand, I'm trying to move it in every direction I can and also moving it as fast as possible. And this hand tracking was based around media pipe and a lot of the optimizations made for it are based off things I've read online, whether that be through GitHub repos, research, or forum topics. And there is still some work to be done to make it more reactive, though I am fine with where it is at now. But I believe going forward, it would be in my best interest to try and set something up with YOLO or something else, as I believe I can make it a little bit more efficient than where it is at now. And I'm 
I'm also not too keen on using epipolar geometry with media pipe just because it uses a little bit more resources than I would like but an easy solution to fix that to find depth is just by using the distance of a measurement that should always stay the same so for example going from the wrist joint to the middle knuckle that distance on your palm will always be the same but it'll be scaled as you get closer to or go further away from the camera but even with that I do have my doubts about how it'll behave with the slam running at the same time on an SBC though I do think it will be fine on a mini PC have it set up so that the clicker finger is the tip of the thumb so just imagine that the controller is parallel to the nail on your thumb I know that there technically is a controller that uses a hand as a model which seems cool but obviously is pretty limited since it was made for the controller and now here is the hand tracking in VR chat unfortunately I couldn't get around to binding the movement of the fingers to my VR chat avatar and this is because I haven't played long enough to get access to the SDK yet which by now I think I only have maybe four hours played but a lot of that was AFK and similar to the clip that was done in the void and in Steam VR home with my hand closing I'm also able to do that in VR chat which acts the same as pressing a button on a controller in addition to VR chat I also did some very quick hand movements in two games that I found that are made for drawing the first one is Maya's virtual brush in this clip you can see how the tip of the controller is bound to the thumb and I chose the tip of the thumb instead of the tip of the index finger or the midpoint between the tip of the thumb and tip of the index finger because I found it a lot more comfortable and easier to focus. There is some weird offset in this game where the orb is not exactly at the tip of the controller so it does look a little off in this video. And the second game is called Vox VR which instead of using a sphere like in the previous game this one uses cubes to draw. And so instead of writing letters I just decided to draw a smiling face and then I decided to make the tongue of it stick out. Overall I'm very happy with where the project is currently at and I'm looking forward to my next iteration of the headset which I will be trying to make wireless for under $300 and within that budget should also include controllers.